Well, welcome back to Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast with your host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. I'm so delighted to have you back with us for another uh, month of conversations on the uh, on our podcast. We just uh, finished up our June podcast um, um, interviews with a panel of men, a powerful panel of men. If you have not had an opportunity to go and listen to or watch those uh, episodes of the podcast, I invite you to go back and look at it um, and listen and share it with the men in your lives. Um, one of the things that one of the things that we talked about last month was the aspect of how um, men, as we grow, as they grow older, the things that they need to consider in their health, wellness, mental health, and um, uh, fitness their nutrition, their soul care, all those things that we covered last month. And we have a, a panel this month for the month of July. I'm so excited that this month we're going to be talking to a very interesting group of women. We always have dynamic women on this podcast, but this month our conversations are dedicated to women of a certain age. Yes, that's our theme for the month of July, women of a certain age. And um, I believe our conversation today will be a great uh, kickoff to uh, a series of conversations that we'll have all month with women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and even 80s. All right. So it's going to be a wonderful month. And I invite you to stay with us, uh, track with us all month in these conversations. And we'll be right back to start our Women of a Certain Age series right after this. All right, let's get started. We have, I want you to help me welcome to the studio, to the podcast studio, Bonnie Yakini Davis. Um, she is a specialist in aging. Uh, she is driven by her passion for helping adults positively navigate the older ages and stages of life for themselves and their loved ones. She writes and speaks from her formal education and training, personal experiences growing older, and what she learned from her intelligent, strong, loving older sisters, 17 and 20 years her senior. In, her, in their honor, her heart compels her to share what she has learned. An award-winning communicator, Ms. Davis's career placed her at the intersection of aging, communication, and technology, a juncture that represents 40 plus years of combined experience and includes working as a contractor or consultant with Fortune 500 companies. Her roles have included advisor, analyst, author, consultant, instructional designer, project manager, reporter, speaker, technical writer, and trainer. For 15 plus years, Ms. Davis has researched, uh, has researched, gained certifications, written, made presentations, and taught courses about aging. She is a certified senior advisor and certified aging in place specialist. Taking advantage, advantage of Georgia's free college classes for adults 62 and older, she will begin the MA in gerontology program at Georgia State University in the fall of 2022. Her first book on aging title, Getting Older, Getting Old and Getting Over It, which I have been reading. Can't wait to finish it, but it is, it's been really blessing me. So um, um, her book entitled Getting Old and Getting Old and Getting Over It, sort of. 
was published in 2021, and it is available on Amazon. The book is a lighthearted yet informative look at aging. She is working on her next book and a YouTube channel about aging. Ms. Davis is a graduate of Villanova University, the University of Illinois, and Georgia State University. She holds an MS in journalism, an MBA in management, and she lives in Decatur, Georgia, where her main cheerleaders are her husband, jewelry designer, Obiana Ajukanyu. Did I say that right? Ajanaku. Ajanaku. And you. her niece, y'all know her, my BFF, my Lucy, Roslyn Davis Vogel. Welcome to the Harmonize Your Life podcast, Bonnie. Uh, it's it's wonderful to be here. I was that me that you were introduced? Okay, yes, I guess that was me. Uh, <laughs> that was you. I, I am honored to be included among these women who you're going to have on the program, uh, on the on the podcast this month. And I'm just excited to be, and thank you so much for this opportunity to share what I know. Well, I'm glad, and I'm just glad to have you with me. Um, you know, since we started this podcast, there's not been a month that's gone by that um, God has not sent me the right people for what I'm sensing we need to talk about. And so as long as I have known you, Bonnie, I've known you for a long time. Mm. And I knew, <laughs> I knew you were just dynamic diva, you know, doing what you do. But I had no idea you were an aging specialist until I'm talking to Rosalind. And I said, you know, in my podcast series in July, I want to focus on women of a certain age. And I want to talk to women in there in there because I'm almost 60. I'm 59. And I'm I mean, I'm sliding into 60. I'm, I'm, on on. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming on over. And, um, and so I want to talk to women about, you know, how do we handle our self-care, our health, our wellness, our mental health, all those things, our finances, our careers, all those things. Mm -hmm as we age and so um we are living longer yes um, people are living longer uh because of technology and uh people are being more conscious about health and wellness and so that's causing us to live longer plus we know more and when you know better, when you what they say when you know better you do better you should do better let's hope yeah. <laughs> let's hope right? right and so i'm talking to Rosalind, and i tell her <laughs> Girl, I want to do this series called Women of a Certain Age. And she said, oh, you got to have Bonnie on. You need to have her on. Now, I knew about your book, mm -hmm. but I didn't know. I knew you were writing from your personal experience, but I didn't know you were also writing from your professional experience as an aging specialist. Mm -hmm. And so I had to get the book. Thank you so much for gifting me with your book. I appreciate that. And, I'm, and my gift to you is I'm encouraging everybody that's watching and listening to us to go to Amazon and right. purchase your copy of, of uh, Bonnie Davis's book, okay? Getting old and getting over it, sort of. I love that, Lord, sort of. <laughs> right, right, right. Thank you. Thank you for that promo. <laughs> I'm, not so, I'm not so good at marketing, so I really appreciate that. Well, you know, I believe that part of what God has given me in this platform is not just for me, but it's to also highlight what other women are doing and uh, get that word out and push it. And so and so I appreciate that. So so, Bonnie, let's get into our conversation. I can't wait okay. to talk to you, especially after reading the book and what I know about you already. Um, I just know this is going to be um, a good conversation. So talk to us about this book. What, what was your motivation in writing this book? What talk, tell us. Well, you said quite a bit of it in that intro. And I say it, it, it basically falls under my four L's. Love, learning, living, and laughter. I'll tell you what that means. The love comes from uh -huh. what you said earlier uh, about my sisters. Okay. 17 and 20 years older. Uh -huh. and when we were younger, we were sister sisters, right? And uh -huh. then as we grew older, with them being 20 and 17 years older, uh, I took on some different roles as 
major advocate for them, support, okay. and uh, and uh, in some cases, confidant. Some things I'm like, really, you you want to tell me that? Okay, but anyway, confidant. Um, and I, I truly, in my heart, I learned so much from them because, oh, they were so intelligent, so um, positive. Well, wait, wait, not all the time positive, but so intelligent, just some dynamic and strong women. Okay, I learned so much from them. So going from friend, sister friend, all the way to uh, power of attorney, all the way through to... Um, executor and trust administrator. So uh, all the way, I, I, I was there. And I would be, actually, it would be a very remiss for me not to share what I learned from them. Okay. I must, I absolutely, and it is in their honor that I share. Okay, so that's love. Then there's learning. Like you said <laughs> in my bio, I've been researching, I've been studying this, and actually, I've always had a, an affinity for older folks. Okay. Actually, my mother was 40 when I was born, okay? That's okay. why I got older siblings. Anyway, <laughs> so I've always had an affinity for older people, so I studied it, and I, I got involved in it initially about housing. I think that everybody should have a safe, warm, loving environment to live in and a home to live in, so that's where I started out, um, aging in place, and... and um, so I continued that and I studied. And so it's for me learning. And I also started to make presentations and do training and everything. About That's my love learning and living. I'm 60 plus, so I'm living. <laughs> Actually, it's about time for me to get to 60 plus plus, but I'm not ready to go there. And I love that you said, this is for women of a certain age. You don't necessarily have to be specific about that age, but we get when you say a certain age. So I'm living it. All right, I'm experiencing it. And then laughter. I have a personal feeling that if everybody I come in contact with, if I can help them to smile or laugh out loud, yeah, I've given them some medicine mm. for life. So I wanted to some, sometimes it's so aging, yeah. Let me be honest, can get can be kind of depressing. When I was taking one uh training for a certification. I got to a page in the tra uh, chapter in the training. I had to put it down. I'm like, wow. seriously? I know, uh, I don't want to hear this. I can't take it. And then I got back to it. So, so I wanted to be able, and I want to be able to wrap some of this and some humor. Okay. Uh, and I think that'll help us. I think that makes it more palatable. And there's a lot, what you said in your intro when you were talking about uh, women and there is so much finances, living, loving, just there is so much. Maturity, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, what's oh, yeah. Absolutely. Maturity, yeah. So anyway, so it all started out. Love, learning, living, laughter. Wow. That's, that's and I think that that I think all those aspects, love, learning, um, sharing, just you know, the relationships, how we love, um, yeah, yeah. what does and you know. What do we learn from those relationships? Then um, the learning, which is lifelong, in my estimation, mm -hmm. I believe in yes. lifelong learning. Laugh. Uh, what was the other one? Living, right? We're going through it, right? right. We, we, right. Look, I say live until you die. That's my motto, right? Absolutely. Live until you die. And then laugh because, you know, the Bible says, um, uh, laughter do it good, does good like a medicine. A merry heart does good like a me like medicine. And so sometimes we do just have to learn to laugh. You know, um, even even when uh, we're a as we're aging, you know, we we make little jokes about <laughs> you know getting down on the floor and finding everything else we can do while we're down there. With you know. Right. And <laughs> Right, right, right. You know, uh, you know, getting up in the morning and and sitting sitting on the side of the bed and 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 you know, I used to just be able to get up and now I got to sit get up and sometimes I get up and have to think, what day is it and what right. do I have go, go? What do I have to do today? Or wake up thinking it's one day and it's the next day. Absolutely. Or wake up and your <laughs> eyes got to focus and. Oh. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm even at a point where I'm, I'm using eye drops now. And I went, last time I went, got my eyes checked, my doctor said, my eye doctor said, well, you know, try this since I'm on the computer a lot. And I just ignored her, right? And then, and, and it's interesting how things come to us. A friend of mine said, said something about me batting my eyes. I'm like, huh? Well, we do bat our eyes more as we get older. <laughs> then I said, hmm, maybe I should start using those eye drops. <laughs> So I found that that has helped. I, I do use the eye drops. So all of that, getting up and getting up in the morning and none of that just leaping out of bed. Because <laughs> I got something I'm working on. One of the books I'm writing is titled Slow Your Roll. Strategically, strategically. I mean, you can't, I'm like, okay. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of it. Strategically you know, slow your roll. Well, when you finish that book, we're going to have you back so we can learn right, more okay. from you. Okay. Right, okay. <laughs> I mean, this is so good. I love it. So, um, so your motivation, love, learning, living, and laugh and laughter um is a part of the book. You you when you started, um, when we um before we, we came on camera, you mentioned that um you had started the book, but then your sister passed and you kind of had a moment where you had to stop. Right. Well, I, I actually finished that one just after she passed. Okay. And then I wanted to, I thought I could immediately start on the next one. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. It's the next but one. The same difference. I, I, I couldn't. I had to put, I had to back up because I was going through um, depression, grief, okay. grief, depression, grief, all mixed yeah, together. Yeah, all together. Uh-huh. It takes time. It takes time. And I was, I was getting stressed about being sad so long because I thought people said, well, look, this was your sister, blah, blah, blah. But then my brother said to me that that sister, the oldest, uh, saw me as a daughter. I'm like, yeah, well, okay. But I always saw her as a sister, right? Right, right. Uh -huh. but, so it was, I was just very out of it. I wanted to keep writing for her, but I couldn't do that. Um, and now it's now it's two years. Uh, I'm coming up and out of it, and I, I've started to write again. And okay. now I'm more thinking when I think of her, and gosh, several of my siblings, who my mother and my siblings have passed away. Now she is another guardian angel. Mm -hmm. uh, I have several guardian angels. I talk to her, you know, I say, okay, come on, come on, come on. And so now I'm taking out a different field now. You know, and as we get older, one of the things that happens, um, and have you experienced this, Bonnie, in your work, as well as maybe even personally, um, as we get older, we do start to lose more people in our yeah. lives. You know, Rosalind yeah. and I were talking the other week about, um, as you know, wow, our friends are starting to pass. Mm -hmm. Our age, people our age, and right. it's right. like we're going to funerals more. And, and so, and I said, you know, Rosalind, the truth of the matter is the older we get, the more that's going to happen. Right. And so, um, I, like last year, my mom transitioned. My mom went home to be with the Lord last year. And two weeks after my mom passed, my aunt, my mother's oldest sister passed. Hmm. Wow. And so now where there was a family of, and I'll never forget this because um, my mom's family was big, a large family like yours. We mm -hmm. had, uh, but um, they had, it was 16 of them. Oh, now we're not that, how, 16 what? <laughs> it was siblings. Siblings. What? No, yeah. we, we it were was, six. But wow. Yeah, so it was 16 of them. Wow. And so now, let's see, out of the 16, um, I want to say, nine or so of them have passed away. Wow. And so, um, and so I have, um, three aunts. Yeah. Um, I wow. have three, three aunts and, um, and three, or maybe 10 of them because I have three uncles, one, two, three, no, four uncles and three aunts living. And so what's that? Seven of them. So yeah, wow. nine of them have, have transitioned. Wow. And so um, I'll never forget when we were leaving my 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 aunt Dot's service last year, this time last year, mm -hmm. um, and my uncle, my mother's brother, my, one of my mother's 
uh, brothers was here for the service and I was holding his arm. He's moving slow. Mm -hmm. And I, and I grabbed his arm to kind of assist him as we're walking out of the church. Mm -hmm. And he didn't say it out loud, but I heard him say it under his breath as they were carrying my aunt's remain, uh, casket, move, rolling her casket out of the church. Mm -hmm. He said, wow. For a family that seemed so big at one time, it seems like we're getting so small. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, just think about that. It's still seven of them left, but they, you know, it's, it's, they are, they're, the family is diminishing. And my aunt, one of my aunts really, really went, is still battling uh, heavily the grief of losing yeah. some, her, her, my, my mother and her, uh, and her older sister back to back like that. And she right. was like, they weren't just my sisters. They were my friends. Yes. So yes. talk to us about what, as an aging specialist, mm -hmm. how do we handle as we're getting older, losing those people in our lives, our loved ones, our siblings, our, our family members, mm -hmm. maybe even our friends. Right. Well, of course there's the accept uh, that there's, there's, you're going to need some time to grieve. And depending on the relationship it, and, and the person, that determines how much time. Nobody can tell you how much time you should grieve. Yeah. So there will be the time to grieve. And then there is putting yourself among the living who oh. have positive relationships, who not telling you, oh, come on, get over it. But mm, 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 no, but loving people who understand and are there for you. Now they need to take you out. Let's go out to eat. Let's go for a walk. Let's yes. let let's let's do some things. You know what you said? I want I want to put a pin in something because I'm okay. to, okay. putting yourself among the living. That's important. Yes, I love okay. that. So that's what we need to do because relationships, we lose relationships. But on the other hand, we need to maintain as many good relationships as possible as we get older. Because okay. relationships, support, adv advocacy, just, po and I, I will keep saying positive relationships. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that is so important. So that that's, I, people sent me, friends sent me books to read. Uh, friends talk to me. Um, my husband talked to me. I don't think he really got it. But anyway, uh, we we're talking. But I just had to, I just had to be and I had to think about her, my sister, my sisters, my brother, the first person who passed in my family was closest to me. He was only two years older than me. We were tight. Everybody knew Bonnie and Glenn. We were tight. So you would, some people would think, and that was God, that was 30 something years ago. You wow. would think mm -hmm. I would, because I said to myself, well, what did I learn from the other deaths? And why am I, you miss those people. Yeah. You want them here with you. And that is the thing. But no, I believe that, I do believe in the whole Garney Angels. I am not I joking. Do. I, I do too. So I believe that good. Oh, 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 let me tell you two things that happened. <laughs> when my, oh, I wish I had the picture. When my sister in California passed, that was in 2007. She was like Rosalind. They were two divas. They were our two divas in the family. Okay. <laughs> when she, when she passed, she was in Oakland, California. Exactly, not exactly, but a year after she passed, her picture appeared on the cover of Oakland magazine. I know, I wish I had it right here near me. Now, here's the thing. I knew she had taken some pictures, this photographer, cause she was that type, you know, diva right now. A, a professional photographer was taking pictures of active seniors. Oh. He took pictures of her. He had those pictures in his portfolio. Anybody that like art, you can go, I mean, you can go and buy it. So yeah. Oakland, chose this picture. I don't know who, maybe somebody, my sister was a teacher, maybe somebody who knew her from her past. And she was in her hula hoop. She used to love to hula hoop. <laughs> there she was, arm stretched, hula hooping. To, to me, oh. for me. 
That was like God sent her to you. I hear you. I believe that, you know, the Bible says that our, our loved ones are in that great cloud of witnesses. And I, I'm telling you, I know it, it's amazing to me. I started gardening last year with mom uh -huh. passed right before. Right. Okay. And mom, one of, one of mom's favorite colors was yellow. We uh -huh. wore yellow to her service and all of that. Okay. I planted yellow rose bushes. Oh. Uh -huh. And when I tell you, sometimes when I am feeling the most like I need her around me, I'll go outside and those yellow roses are Absolutely. blooming. And they, they sometimes they go, you know, and they 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 fall off or whatever, and then yeah. they bloom again. You know right. what I'm saying? And so, and every time I see those yellow roses blooming, I feel like that's my mom yes. coming to me and yes. speaking to me and letting me know she's got me. So I, I, I she's come to me in my dreams. Uh. I mean, you know, and so I believe you. I, and I, I believe in that. And I believe that most of the people that's listening to us have those experiences as well. I mean, th this is good stuff. So listen, let's Wait, talk let, about let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Okay. My, sister okay. My sister who died in 2020, and it was not COVID. Um, some months, I don't think it was a year after she passed, there's a publication called Senior Something in Birmingham. Okay. okay. And, and the ad for the place where she was living, independent, independent living, I mean, she was still driving and everything. Her picture was on the back cover. <laughs> like, they're, they're there, they're there talking to each other. Let's calm Bonnie down, my two sisters. <laughs> you know how you showed her your picture in Oakland? Let's give her another picture. So she can calm, because they worried about me, especially the older sister. Oh, she didn't want me to stress. That's a whole nother thing. Oh, gosh. But anyway. Yeah, two, two. Okay, go ahead. And they were coming. I, I hear what you're saying. So these were special moments that, that God sent them to you. Exactly, exactly. I, I agree. I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I want to talk a little bit more about some of the stuff in your book. Okay. So you talked about the word ma'am mm. and a list of articles. <laughs> I got so tickled. You were like, don't call me ma'am. <laughs> Uh, you you put a list of articles about the word ma'am and um in, in your book. And I, I, I never really I I mean I'm, I'm trying to find it now in the book. I'm not it says call me ma'am at your own risk. I love this. <laughs> uh, but but I never really considered the word ma'am and how some people feel about the word ma'am because you know growing up we were always told especially in the black community right put a handle on it <laughs> yes ma'am no ma'am yes I, I know i know see here's the thing it's one thing if it's um people a lot younger kids teenagers you know i'm good with that but don't let not somebody my age come up to me and say i'm like what the what the so so it's more Okay, the slap in the face was when an adult said yes, ma'am, to me. And when I say that was a slap in the face, that was when a slap to say, oh, you're getting older. Mm. <laughs> you're getting older. Yes, ma'am. But so then I became, uh, uh, you know, very sensitive to it. Now, what I realized later is that folks have been calling me ma'am, even adult, young adults. Before that, but I became I don't know, very sensitive to it. But and let me say, it's not so much my, me feeling something. Well, maybe a little bit about getting older, but that slap in the face um, meant I was rejecting. I was rejecting oh. connotations that placed me in this type of old person box. Like I, that, yeah. that was like saying, okay. Here you are. You're going to be put in this old person box. Okay, and you're going to be in this corner. Exactly. Okay. Go sit and rock. Go sit and rock. But but the box uh, represented the end, but not death. Not death. It represented uh, the end um, I uh, the end of aspirations. The uh -oh. end of I can make contributions. I'm still, you know, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. represented um, the whole, I can't be who I am. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. So it, it was like, 
diminishing your input, your value, what you bring to the table. You oh, you go sit over there. You just you just the old people, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I get, yeah. I get it, yeah. I get it. Uh, uh, but I'm getting over it. <laughs> you know, and that's really, I mean, that's real. I mean, you know, I have young adult children now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always that I think that's such an oxymoronic, uh, oxymoronic statement. Young adult, ch oh, adult right. children, adult and children. Okay, anyway, um, I have these young adults in my life that I birthed, <laughs> right, right, and, uh, and raised, and um, and sometimes they tend to think when we get to be a certain age, we are out of touch. Right. Yes. Yes, my y'all just don't know what's really going on. Y'all, no, I'm not <laughs> out of touch. And I, the lessons that I learned from my age and my mm -hmm. my upbringing and my experiences, some of those lessons are eternal. They are they yes. transcend yes. generations. Exactly. You no, know, there exactly. are some truths that are just truths. I don't care what generation you are a part of. Exactly. You know, and I so. There's some ethics and some principles that matter. I don't care how old you are. Ethics, principles, absolutely. Who am I if not my principles? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. Okay, that that was good. And y'all get the book. So she, I mean, these articles that you listed on um how um and some people, especially those people, uh who are uh, not in the South. I gave a copy of the book to my, my um, eye doctor. And uh -huh. she said she learned from that about people in the South. She didn't know that yeah. whole, what, what I wrote in that. So she said that was interesting. So, and I guess I may be- and, little... and what did you say about, you said Southerners, here's mm -hmm. what you said. You said, uh, it's a Southern thing. Um, <laughs> Kelly Kazak explains ma'am from Southerners perspective and her article, ma'am and sir, um, offensive. We have a politeness crisis, y'all. She wrote, <laughs> Southerners, we have no problem. There are people in the world who are telling us we shouldn't call people ma'am and sir, which can be difficult, a difficult habit to break if you still feel the invisible swing of a switch when you forget to say it. The reason that, uh, the reason say these people who are apparently aren't from these parts <laughs> is, is the honorifics can make some people feel old. Right. Yeah, it makes some people not everybody, but you know what I found is people who even if they're saying "ma'am" is fine with me, they might have some other word later or that they'll come across that might be a little touchy, might make them maybe not. Well, you know now, if, you know if people are um, even if people ask you when your kids um, now people are saying, "What do you want to be called when you when when your kids have uh, children?" And I'm right. like. Everybody's coming up with these new terms for grandma <laughs> and granddad. I'm gonna be G Daddy and I know that and, <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, when I was growing up, it was just granny or grandma. <laughs> well, but I think now this probably has a lot to do with baby boomers. Baby uh, boomers live way down in denial. Baby boomers grew up in an era when the whole thing was to be young, to be yeah, nobody over 30 is get away. So that our and I am a baby boomer, our mentality is so fighting, getting older. You, you'll see some people. I'm just going to be straight up. I can tell when I see a certain woman who's trying to look a certain age, like 20, 30 years younger. I know that's a baby boomer. <laughs> I'm trying to hold on to it. I know it. So part of that is baby boomer women. Yeah. Okay. Baby boomer women. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. I mean, you put it here. You said the search you, that you generated 59,400,000 results <laughs> for why I hate being called ma'am. Yeah. Wow. And it, uh, you listed links, ma'am, the four letter word no woman wants to hear. Please mm -hmm. don't call me um, from Huffington Post, to, uh, September 2013. Um, please don't call me ma'am. Cosmopolitan in tw uh, July 2016. Please don't call me ma'am. NPR uh, 2010. Don't call me ma'am. AARP blogs April 23rd, 2013. Don't call me ma'am. YouTube June 3rd, 2018. Terms of endearment or disrespect. New York Times. How it feels to be called ma'am. Next Avenue um, and the social 
um, on Twitter. It's it is being called "Ma'am or Sir: A Sign of Respect" from 2018. I think this is really good, and I'm I want to encourage those of you who are listening and watching to get her book and just read and and follow these articles. Look these articles up. It may give us some insight yeah. into why we're trying to look 30 and 40 years younger as baby boomers. <laughs> and, and, and and as we as we as baby boomers get older. Uh huh. There'll probably be fewer searches for that. Okay. Next okay. generation might be okay with it. Oh, okay. We'll see. we'll see. I'm gonna watch that. See how that goes. Okay. All right. <laughs> now I found chapter four of your book very, very of great value to me, <laughs> and uh, I think it would be a great value for us to talk about it here. You said um, you talked about. Um, Things that loosen that can loosen our wrinkles. I thought that was so. I love the way you put that. You talked about things that loosen our um, wrinkles. Let's let, unpack that yeah. a little bit for me. Okay, uh, so this all started, and the chapter is actually the title "Looking Up," and that's because okay. I, I say this in the beginning. I was in a little consignment store, and I saw a cute little mirror on a table. I went to pick up that little mirror, and I looked down. And I, when I looked down in the mirror, it's like, who the heck is that? You know, I saw my reflection. Uh, things hanging, cheap you. I'm like, what has happened? But I noticed as I started to raise the mirror up, okay, things start to fall in place a little bit better. Okay. And I understood why, you know, with selfies, hey, that's always a good pose. Look up. So that's why I titled it, look up. <laughs> Selfish, you need to look at, as we get older, hey, look up. So anyway, I noticed that. And then so I started to, to do research. Every Everything I do is usually based on research and experience and all. And um, I read about these uh, mnemonic muscles in our face. And when we look down, they, they sort of loosen. And so the thing is to work on those muscles. But what the, the main work on those muscles, and I'm actually going to look at the book for this, Things we know we should be doing, right? Right, right. Consume good nutrients. Yeah. Drink plenty of water. Yeah. Why is that so hard to do? Anyway, drink plenty of water. Relax facial expressions. Mm -hmm. uh, manage our sleep. I'm having a hard time with the whole sleep thing, but that is, it's only in recent years that I really, really learned how important sleep is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and use sunscreen, yes, of all skin tones. Yeah, yes. All skin, yeah. All mm -hmm. skin tones. Um, mm -hmm. and, and nutrients, you know, that's to get your vitamins and minerals. And you you, you should try to get it from food. But sometimes I take I take uh, multis and some supplements because I don't get it all, everything I need. But okay. nutrition is so important. But fresh fruits and vegetables, always a good way to go. Um, and water. Should have learned this from my sisters. They drank a lot of water and skin, nice. Uh -huh. Yeah. The whole water adds, um, oh, as we get older, our skin becomes thinner and drier. Right, right. right. So we need to, uh, yeah, I use moisturizer and all that, but we have to do some work on our outer beauty from the inside. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside. That's, so, that's all I drink is water. All I drink is er is water, number one, and then herbal tea. I don't drink any carbonated drinks. And, th and that, it's been that way now for me well over 25 years now. And you have beautiful skin. Let me just say that. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, yeah, so what we eat, what we drink, more water, more not, and, and I'm with you. I'm herbal tea and I'm I'm water. Uh, okay. Even if you got to drink tap, you know, I know there's people buying water, but even if you got to drink, drink your water. But what about those facial expressions? Now, remember when we were little and we frowned and, act, and people would say, all right, you keep doing that, your face going to lock like that. Remember that? You told us that. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't believe that, but that was partially true, you know. It, as we, well, here's the thing. For me, it looks like the frowning face is deep, deep. Smiling face also, you know, you get smile lines, mm -hmm. but there is such a difference. The frowning face, no, the smiling person, usually there's something coming from inside that's positive, that's, that's a whole different feel. 
So mm -hmm. when I see somebody with some wrinkles or whatever, they old and they decide I'm going natural, I'm not doing Botox or any tox or any of that, and they smile just like you're okay, Tony. You 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 are perfect example. You are beautiful with that beautiful smile right now. <laughs> so that is that is different. So I don't say don't stop smiling is my point. Okay. But maybe knock off some of that frowning, okay? Because okay. why what does that do good for you inside or outside? Yeah. So anyway, the facial expressions, smile, manage your sleep. I I you know, read the book <laughs> to get more about sleep. But sleep is so important. That is when our skin rejuvenates. Okay. Okay. You need enough sleep to allow, and, and I mean good sleep. Uh, I have an issue with I wake up in the middle of the night. That's okay. not a good thing. Uh -huh. you need rest and good sleep. Reju mm -hmm. And your body rejuvenates. There's a there's a reason for sleep. Yeah. yeah. Right? To rejuvenate. And then I, I already said use sunscreen. I saw this one beautiful brown skin. African American woman, I saw her. I just had to say, "Hey, what are you doing for your skin?" And she said, "Sunscreen every day, year round." Oh, okay. I know a lot of people say black don't crack. I know, I know, but she said sunscreen. I started sunscreen. Now I had to find some sunscreen that didn't look like I had white cake on my face. Okay, so I found some sheer sunscreen and. I'm going with that. You know, you do what you can. <laughs> right, right, so, right, right, right. So those are, my, those are my basics as far as uh, wrinkles. Okay, okay. And it's okay to have some wrinkles. And it's okay if you want to go in and get shots. Or say, hey, to each his own. But from the inside, we're going to- You're gonna... talking about from the inside. Yes, yes. Okay, so-, so um that whole idea of loosening our wrinkles. So sometimes those wrinkles are not physically outside, external to us. Sometimes those wrinkles uh, are internal. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Exactly. Wow. 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 Exactly. <laughs> so what are some strategies that you recommend, recommend for women are just struggling with the whole idea of getting older, or struggling with aging? Oh, struggling. Okay. Uh, one person I was talking to about this, she said, Bonnie, just tell them you're getting old to get over it. Well, uh, eh, some people won't take that. <laughs> um, so I need to soften that. But there are a couple of things. Well, I think about three. Uh, number one, and this might sound a little weird, but fall in love with yourself. Mm. Now, I say fall in love with yourself. And let's take this to uh, this uh, this channel. I put that under self harmony. Self harmony. Okay. I'm gonna tell you straight up honest. I didn't truly fall in love with myself until my 60s. I'm not gonna go into the reasons why, but I didn't truly fall in love. That means, oh, uh, I I hear myself. I see myself. I love myself like I love my husband. I love myself like I love Ross. I, 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 and that means caring about my body, caring about my health, mm -hmm. working to be positive now. That, and for me, that's work because I grew up, uh, people around me were negative. <laughs> So I've got some wired negativity in my brain, but but working on being positive, but to love myself and also love myself past, love myself present, love myself in any stage, not just now, 70, 80, 90, 100, <laughs> love myself, love that person. And I, I do mean, it's not just love, it's deep, you must fall in love you know how you feel now come on now we've all been in love with some men not necessarily all and i won't say some men we've all been in love with someone yeah. um, from a romantic perspective right mm -hmm. you know what that felt like love yourself that much respect mm -hmm. yourself, love yourself and that's that intentional kind of uh, do uh, love, you know, yes. being very intentional about caring for yourself, loving yes. yourself, pouring into yourself the way you do, it, as intentional as you are about those other relationships. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The other one is uh, 
Oh, and I said stay in love at any stage. And then that's that's self harmony. And then there's relationship harmony. Mm -hmm. Relationship harmony. I mentioned earlier, as we get older, mm -hmm. those relationships are so important. I've seen examples where people have been in relationships and just were more social. I am an uber introvert. Yeah, you are. Very. But I'm a situational extrovert. Okay, this is a situation. I will be an extrovert. Uh, so even for introverts, the relationships, the positive, the loving relationships are important. So sometimes to keep those relationships and get, we might need to change a few things. Mm. And it can be hard. I know. I know someone who uh, distanced herself from relationships. Oh, anger. Oh, this. Oh, and uh, the last time we talked about it, she said, well, I, just, I guess I'm just going to have to take it to the grave. There was nothing else I could say. But I could see what she was missing out on just mm -hmm. because of that attitude. So sometimes we think about it, we look at ourselves, even that person we love, our self-love, are there some changes we need to make about ourselves to mm -hmm. enhance ourselves, enhance the people around us? Come mm -hmm. on, come on. So sometimes some change might, so relationship harmony is critical. Self-harmony and relationship harmony. So, so um, those are strategies. Those are basic strategies that I would tell. Yeah. Okay. So, so the two strategies that you give to women as they are, um, as they are, if they're struggling with aging mm -hmm. is being intentional to fall in love with yourself right. and to maintain or get in good, healthy relationships, put exactly. you in good, healthy relationships. And that was one I wasn't going to mention, but let me go ahead and mention it. Uh, handle your business. <laughs> okay. Okay. When I say handle your business. Mm -hmm. And this is something I'm going to write about too. I mean, your finances, know your finances. If you are in a relationship, yeah, yeah. You know everybody's finances. Okay. Right. Um, right. You don't know who might pass first, whatever. I've heard about women being in some awkward situations. Yeah. So yeah. Finances. Um, Get your, get your business in order. Mm -hmm. It can be hard. Wills, trust, uh, yeah. power of attorney, advanced directives, all, uh, mm -hmm. last, all that. Get, go ahead. Get that in order. Get it in order. That's get it right. In. Get it in order. And get it in order while you are lucid, while, you're, while you can think about what you want, know what you want, while you can communicate what you want. Exactly. And updated. Bishop and I were just saying the other day, we got to update. It's time for us to update our will because um, the last the last update to our will, our children were still under 21. Right. So now our oldest son is 26. It's going to be okay. 26. So now it's time where we might have had, I had my sister being my um, being my medical power of attorney. Well, <laughs> my children are old enough now to make decisions for us. Okay. You know, and we're having those critical conversations with them around the table about what we want, what we're leaving to them, what how we want them to handle what we're leaving to them. Absolutely. Because we're not leaving this stuff to you for you to just squander it in the streets. Absolutely. That's the way it goes. <laughs> a lot of a lot of women uh don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a fear. There's a I don't want to talk about that. Ooh. No, it's gonna happen. So we might as well prepare. Right. Wow, Bonnie, you 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 have just blessed us. You you're a wonderful um dialogue partner. Dialogue partner. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I need to leave you with with three statements. I know that's what I was going to ask and you to do. What's your final? But before you do that, okay. okay. Before you do that, mm -hmm. let me do one thing. I want to just do a little station identification. Let everybody know where they okay. can find you, and then okay. I want you to close us out with your three statements that you're going to make. Okay. All right. So first of all, if those of you that are listening to us, if you are not watching us on YouTube, go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> this is the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. You can find us on uh, Anchor, um, listen to us on Anchor Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google, and Spotify. 
but you can also listen and watch us on YouTube. And we are really, really, really pushing the YouTube channel because we want to get our um we want to get our subscriptions up on YouTube because when we get to a certain number of, of subscriptions, we're able to do different things with the YouTube channel. So go there. It doesn't cost you anything to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. What happens when you do that? You help us with our analytics and so that when people are looking for conversations such as these uh, on self-care, health, wellness, fitness, finances, and things that will help uplift our community. When we, uh, when you type in those things in your Google search, the Harmonize Your Life podcast will be one of those things that will come up as uh, an option for those who are looking for this type of good quality, positive information. So go to our YouTube channel and subscribe and you'll be notified every Monday, every week that the podcast is uploaded. We upload new episodes every Monday during our seasons of, pod of podcasting. And then, um, and you'll be notified whenever those, uh, uh, those new episodes are uploaded. If you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, I also want to invite you women to join the Harmonize Your Life, um, uh, self-care network. Uh, we have a network of women who are, are just like me, like-minded women like myself, like Bonnie and others who are part of our network that come in. We have uh, uh, medical doctors, psychiatrists. We have uh, um, working moms, stay-at-home moms. We have pastors. We have physicians. We have accountants, school teachers. You run, you name it. We are all over, all over. We're all things women, but we're all things self-care, health, and wellness and we are about uplifting our community and bringing information and changing the narrative for African-American women or women of color. So come on and join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network. You can go to my website at drtonyalvarado.com. There is a button there for you to join the network on my website, on the homepage of the website. Our guest today is Bonnie Davis. Bonnie Davis is a, uh, uh, Bonnie, uh, let me see, what she call herself? Bonnie <laughs> Yakini Davis. And I found out that Yakini means truth, woman of truth. And I really love that. So oh. Bonnie uh, uh, Yakini Davis is our specialist that we're talking to, our aging specialist, uh, specialist in aging. And she is on, we've been talking about her book, Getting Old and Getting Over It. You can find her book on Amazon, Getting Old and Getting Over It, sort of, is available on Amazon. You can also go to her website at bonniejdavis.com and read about uh, all the wonderful things that she's doing there. She also has a YouTube channel, Bonnie Yakini Davis, and so you can go there and follow her. She's also available on LinkedIn at Bonnie, uh, uh, Bonnie Davis. Uh, I think it was M-A-M-S on LinkedIn. And so please go to her website, go to uh, go to her YouTube channel, follow her, um, get her book, host party, <laughs> have Bonnie come into your virtual meetings or bring her to your tea parties or whatever you're doing, ladies. And let's, I'm, I'm already thinking about Bonnie hosting uh, uh, a live and uh, interviewing you live in, a, in an event. <laughs> for women of a certain age, okay? So we'll talk okay. more about that offline. But listen, I'm so glad that you're here with us this week. And Bonnie is going to close us out with three things that she's going to share with us. And then we'll see you again next week. Come on, Bonnie, give us the last okay. thing you want to share with us. Three statements and one question. Statement one, this is still, regardless of your age, this is still your time on planet earth. Statement number two, you are still unique. There is no other human or other being that is just like you. Statement number three, you and all your uniqueness, you are going to die. But more importantly, that one question, what are you going to do between now and then? Let me repeat that. You in all your uniqueness, you are going to die. But 
What are you going to do between now and then? I hope it's positive, good stuff. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Bonnie, whew, this was good. Thank you again for being our first guest on the Women of a Certain Age podcast series of the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. We'll see you again next week. Don't miss it. See you soon. Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado, and I want to personally invite you to join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network. Join us for fitness motivation, health and wellness information, inspiration, self-care strategies, and ideas for creating harmony in your life. As a certified health and wellness coach, it is one of my greatest honors to support women in their fitness, health, wellness, and self-care goals. Join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network, and we will do you good on your journey.